On this episode, we're talking about the fourth book in the Redemption of Earth's Past series. If you haven't read that, if you don't know what that is, get out of here. Listen to episode four of our podcast. Welcome back to the My Next Books podcast. We're going back to the roots. This is how we started. I came to visit Paolo. (laughs) (laughs) You're talking about the free body problem again. How are you? I'm not as well as Jijin Liu's wallet, I guess. But um, <laughs> I guess better than the reader, the average reader of the book we're going to talk about okay. today. Does it take you back? Because this is the reason we started the podcast. We, That's true. It's been a year. Yeah, it marks a pretty important point in <laughs> the creation of this podcast. How do you feel looking back at the trilogy? Do you still regard it as like a good sci-fi trilogy? Do you, has your opinion changed much since then? You know, I have fond memories. I still think it's a it's a very very good series. Fond memories. It's yeah. fairly depressing. So, <laughs> lots of existential well, memories. Like, uh, what I want to say, like like of the time reading it, like it, it was very yeah. enjoyable. It was a very good story because uh, as we talked about in those episodes, like there were a lot of like irrelevant points. I think my brain has just removed all of those, and so. <laughs> I feel like I don't remember much about those books, but I still remember all the main points mm. and all the interesting points. I'm kind of uh, reliving it because I've been watching the television adaptation. Mm. So, of course, today we have gathered again to discuss mm. a parequel. Mm. Did you know that was a word? It's like no. a sequel, but it's a parallel, whatever, something on the side. Okay. So it's the fourth book in the <laughs> remembrance of the Earth's past yeah. trilogy. Yeah. Which is now quadrilogy, officially <laughs> sanctioned by the writer himself. Well, it's which... three plus one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So today we'd like to get deep into it because nobody talks about this. I, I just told Paolo because, because we, uh, <laughs> we were planning this podcast mm. and I was trying to remember some points from this <laughs> plot. So I googled like a plot summary and nobody has this. <laughs> If you want a detailed plot summary of this book, I don't mm. think it exists. <laughs> All the people online have collectively given up, and they they always talk about the first two parts of the book, and then they're like, mm. oh, it, something happens, I, I I can't deal. I mean, the reviews on Goodreads <laughs> are not that bad. I was kind of surprised. Yeah. Like, recently, when I finished reading a book, I, I like reading some of the reviews on uh, on Goodreads. And generally, I like to read negative reviews. <laughs> I think they're more interesting. Even of a book I like, and... Yeah, there were a lot of negative reviews for this one, but lots of people really enjoyed it. Mm, I was surprised. Yeah. So we're talking the redemption of time. Yeah. And we're also going to briefly talk about the TV show by the company Tencent, which is like a Chinese conglomerate I've never heard of. Uh, really? Tencent <laughs> is one of the three giants of um, Chinese internet together with Alibaba and uh, Baidu. Oh, I want to ask you about it. So okay. Tencent is the owner of WeChat, which is the oh, I know. Yeah. chatting message, like chatting app in, mm. in China. And uh, it's also, I think they are the company which owns Epic, which in turn owns yeah, yeah, like, uh, all kinds of a lot of other stuff. And they, the have, if you had a favorite small game development studio, mm. it has been probably bought by Tencent. <laughs> <laughs> like my, my favorite one was Paradox, Paradox Interactive. So it's the, uh, things the, haven't been very nice since The then. dark menace behind the scenes yeah. <laughs> controlling all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So I was super skeptical about this. And uh, the sole reason for me to watch this was I really wanted to see how they adapted certain things. Mm. So disclaimer, you're going to completely spoil like all three bodies and everything. So if you haven't read the original trilogy... There is no reason for you to be here. Mm-hmm. Run, run away! Like, <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, if you are, if you are not interested, you just want to hear about how bad author sanctioned fun fiction can get. Then I guess you can listen to this podcast. If you have read the Free Body Trilogy, please listen. This is for you. <laughs> if you haven't read it and you're very curious about what this all is about, I would wholeheartedly recommend the original trilogy. Mm. I, I asked you, I haven't answered myself. I still think it's one of the best sci-fi in the sense of being creative and mm. having new ideas and concepts. If you're into sci-fi, definitely give it a go. You're gonna spoil it here, so stop listening. <laughs> so I was very curious how those things are going to be adapted. And I was really, really surprised. First of all, it's super faithful to the book. Might be the most faithful adaptation of any book ever I've ever seen made of. Mm. And uh, Pablo hasn't seen it. I have seen, I think, 15 episodes now. And it's 30 for the first book. 
Mm. So I'm going to say a bunch of things I really liked and okay. I'll try to keep this brief. I just wanted mm. to give an update to people who might be curious to watch this because mm-hmm. as the presence online on, <laughs> on Free Body Problems. On free body problems. <laughs> Probably not number one, yeah, but uh, we're no. one of the like, top people to yeah. talk about this, I guess, in number of well, things. We can like, self-proclaim <laughs> ourselves to be number one. And people have demanded this, mm. God damn it! so we have to put ourselves through this episode because people demanded us to talk about the sequel. <laughs> Everybody who listens to our episodes, I get emails and they're like, yeah, I finished all the episodes. Where is the redemption of time? Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. So for you people, uh, I have very good news about the TV show. <laughs> We talked about the book. The characters are basically non-existent. Hmm. And the TV show has completely fixed this. <laughs> so actually, they have... It's even longer than the book in parts. Well, that, that would have been my first question. Because, yes. like, like the first book, I really loved it. Uh, but we talked about, yeah, uh, basically, especially the main character is yeah. essentially completely irrelevant. Yeah. They couldn't care less about him. Yeah. So they like completely kind of fixed drag this. Down. Like, the main character is the scientist guy who sees the numbers. Yeah. His name is Veng Meo Meo. Yeah, it was like Meow or something. <laughs> I, I, like, I, i apologize to... Don't quote us on that. Yeah, all of the people of China. So he's the main character and it's very heavily focused on the mystery detective side of a TV show. So mm. there's like, you know, the, the Lord and then like the, the Sophons and the, the secret mm. society of the frontiers of science and then the, the suicides of the scientists mm. and he sees the numbers and it's like a mystery. And it really builds up on yeah. like a drama of the mystery mm. and he is the focus of the story and he is actually a character that's mm. an interesting character arc. Okay. That's completely not in the book. <laughs> nice. Does he still use a uh, film uh, camera? Yes. <laughs> and, but it's explained and it makes sense because he's like... A, Does it? Yeah, because he's a geek and his hobby is developing photographs. And he okay. actually has like a vintage super special camera, which they talk about in the show. Okay. Which they didn't talk about in the, in the book, I right. think. And they actually have it like a plot point that he really likes this technology. Okay. And he really likes to develop photographs in his spare time. So it kind of makes all sense. It's kind of fixed. And Dushir, I can't say his name. Dashi. Dashi. He's great. He's the best character in the show. Okay. <laughs> it was also the best character in the book. Yeah, well, so no, I would say Ye Wenjie was the best character in the book. But He's, he's awesome in the show. Okay. And Ye Wenjie, both young and old, the actress mm-hmm. is great. She looks okay. very mysterious and stuff. Uh, I can't believe that they have actually spent 40 minutes only talking about physics mm. and explaining them in a way that's very understandable, like mm. the solar systems and the free body like movements and all this. Mm. And they also spent the whole episode talking about logic gates and talking about how they built a computer with the army. <laughs> I was very curious how they would do that in the VR game. Right. So all the episodes about the VR game are awesome. I love that. Yeah, that, like the VR game is probably the only thing I would watch. Like I, I probably want to watch it just on YouTube videos mm-hmm. to see how it is. The depiction of dehydrating. I was very mm-hmm. curious. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> okay. like, it's like a 3D character mm-hmm. spasming out on the floor. Mm-hmm. And then they roll them up like in a very graphic way. Like okay. the, the shriveled out corpse. So they like, oh, roll it out and put it under their arm and they walk away. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. all that is awesome. And all the science is explained in a way that's not dumb mm-hmm. and very easy to consume. And mm-hmm. combined with the drama, it actually is very engaging. So I kept watching. I was very surprised. So I would recommend it if you at mm-hmm. least were too curious. There are a lot of small nonsense things like Trisolarans use the MSN Messenger for messaging people, which is very, very <laughs> tickled me very much. <laughs> I've used MSN Messenger. MSN, yeah. of course. Yeah, so that's what Trisolarans That was like, my, when I was in high school, that was like the most important thing in my life. Exactly, so yeah. Trisolarans know. So I'm very amazed that this exists, because I didn't think this could exist in nowadays media. <laughs> like, the television show that takes a lot of its time, it's very slow, mm. and explains it like they should. Okay. And it actually makes sense. Nice. I, I'm, 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 I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. But it's very slow, so I think for the general audience it's going to be boring. Okay. And some parts are really dragged out, but they're also dragged out in the book, so it's very faithful. Okay. Like the part where Wang Miao is going insane because of the numbers. Uh, I remember yeah. that was so long in the book. Yeah, or like the, the universe is, is uh, like flickering. Or Yes, that's yeah. the huge point of the show as well, but it's the same like the book, so they are not doing it wrong. They're just Okay. So this part... 
you can skip a little bit. Yeah, that was kind of the worst part of the But it's still book. better than the book, I think. <laughs> because it's filmed interesting. Okay. <laughs> and there are a lot of interesting scenes, like the sofons flying from the point of the sofon, mm-hmm. and you don't know what that is. Mm. So from the point of view of somebody who has never read it, mm-hmm. and then having all these things come together and be explained at the mm-hmm. end, it's great. Okay. So like the mystery, everything will be explained at the end. Hmm. So from that point of view, it has to be a great TV show because so they can still mess it up because I'm already just halfway. But so yeah. far, it seems nice. Okay, thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up. I recommend it, even though it's slow. But for me, it's the best kind okay. of show. And the actors are good. I was so surprised. Yeah. Will they make uh, the second, third, and especially will they make the fourth yeah. book? Yes. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a hunch which says like the fourth book will not make it. Into I, I think show. so. <laughs> I watch it. <laughs> You'd watch it. Yeah, it's so bonkers. I would watch that. Uh, it's insane. Okay. I think they will make the second season of the uh, the second book I because mean, it's easy to film most of the it. The second one. Because the concepts are the same that lend themselves very well to be adapted as a TV show detective drama because mm-hmm. wall facers, wall breakers you know, the sword holders, all this, there's no mm-hmm. nonsense effects to have, be had. It's I mean, very interesting. That That's true, but they then it like goes a insane. really big budget like, yes. to, do, to do the second one. Like, the second one is when there are, like, all the space battles. Mm. So you could do the space battles without depicting them. You know? <laughs> uh, that would be so lame. <laughs> but would it? Because... Yeah. <laughs> but I would like it if they actually made it in a clever way, like they would show diagrams of the battle or they would mm. show the people reacting in the spaceships or something, not the spaceships from the outside okay. exploding. Yeah. It could work and it would be clever. It wouldn't be all about the spectacle, it would be about the meaning. Okay. And the book itself has the battles happen in a chapter, like in a short yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, that's true. Like, the bo- like it's not an action book. So and... they could spend a few minutes to show it and then, okay, okay so that's the budget. <laughs> all right. I mean... Okay, I guess... I, I can guess see it can being work. adapted. Yeah, yeah. It's not, like, not impossible, but... Mm. Yeah. And they will probably make a lot of money. It's very successful so far, what I've heard. So okay. Maybe it will happen. We'll see. <laughs> you might be here again next year doing, <laughs> like, <laughs> Pedicle 5, somebody wrote another yeah. book or some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was all the good things, so now let's get into... Okay. <laughs> There are some good things about this book. <laughs> Let's get into the book, The Redemption of Time, and yeah. Mr. Mr. Bao Shu. Okay. His real name is Li, Li Jun. Li Jun. I, I, I don't want to try. Please don't uh, uh, tell us we pronounced it wrong. We know. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you like this book? Okay, I want to make like a premise. Okay. So, when I was reading this book, um, the approach I wanted to have when reading it uh, I wanted to decide whether to consider it um, fan fiction or part of the series mm-hmm. as a book. Now, now, normally I would consider it just fan fiction, and as fan fiction, I never take it that seriously. Like, you know, it's still like a fan mm. uh, just writing about something they love, and as good of a writer they can be, it's really hard for it to develop the series and develop the world and develop mm. anything in a, in a way which is not completely biased. Mm-hmm. However, in this case, because it, it was sanctioned by the... Yeah. like supported by, by the author, I just told myself, okay, since it was supported and, you know, it's published and mm-hmm. I have it like in the same edition as the other Yeah, books. it's the same edition, same cover. Mm-hmm. It seems to fit right in the series. Exactly. So I just told myself, okay, I'll consider it as part of the part of the series so i want to judge it as a mm-hmm. real book and as a real book it's, <laughs> it's pretty bad <laughs> it's a real book <laughs> yeah yeah like again if you told me like just this is just one fiction well probably i wouldn't read it but you know if i read it then i'd be like yeah i mean it's fun fiction you know it has the pros and cons of fun fiction mm-hmm. finish <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess, like, this is what I want to say. If you're ready to consider it just as someone from Boeing over this series, I don't think you will be disappointed. Like, it's it's all right. It's very easy to read. And, hmm. yeah, that's it. But if you expect to read something that can fit right in into the story, then no. no. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's definitely not the case. So, all that aside, did you yeah. enjoy it? I guess I didn't. But, mm. I like, it also wasn't tedious. It's but- just that... So many times I had to like stop and 
just you know face palm and, exactly. and ask myself like I, I, have I just read that like, exactly there are so yeah. many points in this book where I was like excuse me yeah. did you just say that excuse me yeah <laughs> There is one specific point in the book. I'm very curious if you can I, guess I have it. several. <laughs> but, but there's like one point where I I was listening to it also as yeah. an audiobook. And at this point, I had to stop yeah. and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say it's bad, but I'm going to say it's ridiculous. This book yeah. is ridiculous so much. And it's also naive, some of the things mm. th- that he talks about. He's not a dumb guy. He knows his things. Mm-hmm. But he says things that are so... Like, why would you even include this in this book? <laughs> so mesmerized, like, by his like, decisions. Uh, yeah, I don't like all the details. Yeah. So I wasn't bored. I, I, I have to say, if I have to, like, choose, I, I enjoyed it. I have to say I enjoyed it. Okay. But I very quickly forgot it. Yeah. And I was thinking about the same thing you said. I was trying to, like, consider people always say, this has ruined the whole trilogy. How have you... How do you dare to to retcon these things? And it is mm. I've never had this feeling. Like people say something came out and it completely yeah, destroyed like I mean, the Star I, Wars series or something. I, I, like I never agree with that. Like if you don't like it, this, you can just ignore it. And this no one is forcing you to to exactly consider that into your own mental image. So this is the first time I felt a little bit like that. Mm. Because they went over every single event from the previous books yeah. again, yeah. but made them worse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say like they made them worse. I do think that for some things, the explanations made a lot of sense. Yes. But very few. For most of them, like they were just stupid. But the sole fact of having them explained yeah. made it kind of worse for me. Okay, we- we'll go over it. And then, then yeah. I had this feeling like it's putting this book in a context of something that's got substance and depth to schlock entertainment. <laughs> that's how yeah. I felt. So yeah. after a while, after like the first half of the book, mm-hmm. I completely switched to fun fan fiction mode. Yeah. And then I didn't mind. Okay. But the first like part, I was trying to like put it like I could imagine <laughs> that it actually belongs into the story. Okay. And that didn't work. But I wasn't bored, and it was very easy and very fast to get. And yeah. It's very easy to laugh at this and poke fun at this. Yeah. So I feel very bad about this. I don't want this episode to be just shitting on it. Uh, yeah. But, but it will be that. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I hope it won't be as much. Okay. A meeting. <laughs> Fake <laughs> matter. Yeah, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What have yeah. we gotten ourselves into? I was yeah. like, oh boy, where, they, <laughs> where to even start with this? Like, right. when, okay, so let's just quickly talk about the writer. Hmm. So he himself in the book says, mm-hmm. he's feeling, he's very humble. He sounds like a, like a nice, humble guy. And mm. he said, he wants to stay in this world a little bit longer and he loves the things. Okay, 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 okay. Wait. Okay, are we starting from there? No. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to mention, like, right. like about him, just... Mm-hmm. He seems nice. <laughs> he, he, he didn't. Like, my, the first chapter when I read it, I was already, okay, maybe I've made a big mistake. <laughs> I had the same feeling, I just okay. tried to be nice to him. All right. But, yes. And then even in the story, it's like self-referencing himself. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> all right, all right. So... He uh, wrote this one year after the last book came out. It was like a short story fan fiction thing. And somehow mm-hmm. it became really popular. Mm-hmm. People wanted it more and then he made it into a book. Would you want this more if you read a part of this? I mean, I don't know which part let's, it let's originally published. Any part, so. like, let's say any part. Uh, after having read uh, I mean, any part I can of understand. This. Uh, so I think it's one of the reasons why it was successful is that, like, it's made for internet what i mean is like it has memes it has a lot of internet jokes okay. it has a lot of things which work really well if you okay. are like a, a like a reddit user okay like it like if you're that kind of person yeah there are a lot of things which will get you excited okay yeah okay so after he's written this he mm-hmm. said it has kick-started his career and he started yeah. to be a full-time writer good job uh, and i he's mean he's not a bad writer okay let, let me rephrase that D- there is like one thing that I think was really, really terrible about his writing, but I don't know if that's just the English translation, if it's more normal in Chinese, but yeah, his metaphors were just... Yes. (laughs) 
Uh, <laughs> I'm going to ask you because you're more qualified. What do you think about the, right, about the writing style? So yeah. it's okay. All right. Uh, but the metaphors, not so much. And some yeah. of the things he says, not so much either. Yeah. But, but we don't want to hate you, Mr. Lee Jun. No, but what I want to say is like, it, it, it's very, it is very easy to read mm. and it is, the pacing is good. Mm. And yeah. So in that sense, I think it was right. Like he can be a writer. So he wrote a few more books and he won like six Nebula Awards for sci-fi in Chinese. Nebula? Ah. Oh, okay, Chinese Nebula Awards. So okay. Chinese Sci-Fi and Fantasy Awards, the Nebula okay. Awards. I don't know what that is. Well, the Nebula Award is like is not Chinese. Like it's an international award, and it's the one that was won by was originally won by like Xi Jinping. It was the first yeah, yeah, yeah. Asian. So, writer. so this is only for China. So somehow okay. I don't know how this works. Oh, okay, maybe there is like a, a specific like Chinese prize. There is another award only in China called the Galaxy Awards for Chinese okay. Sci-Fi. So All he right. he won those three times. Wow. So why is he so popular? So maybe we should mm. read the next book, Zero. Maybe he's yeah. quite better. <laughs> yeah, maybe the other books are really good. He's only uh, I'm like 30 something years old, quite yeah. young. So yeah. maybe he'll grow up to be an amazing writer. Yeah. Just trying to say something nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so this Redemption of Time is mm. 400 pages long. Mm. It came out in 2011, one year after the, the last Death's End. Okay. Yeah, so would we recommend this? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it's short. If you're curious, I guess, spend that money and read it. But it took me about a week to read it, so I guess it's not the end of the world. Mm. But like, if you've read the trilogy of Remembers of Earth Past, you don't need to read this, like, at all. Like, was there any idea or, like, story part or concept or character that you liked, like, that was worth it in this mm, story? I, I think the only part that was worth it was how he explained some of the things which felt a bit forced or a bit, um, like, contradictory mm. in the okay. third book. I think that was the only thing. Everything else is just, mm. just terrible. <laughs> So Not terrible, but say. like like pointless, <laughs> like completely yeah. pointless. You, you don't you don't need to read it for anybody who hasn't read the trilogy. Obviously, never read this. Yeah. For somebody who's read the trilogy and wants fan fiction, I guess it's not like the worst you could do. Uh, sure, of course. So I wouldn't not recommend it. <laughs> you would not like. I would not not, not recommend it. On, yes, on it. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I liked some parts, like probably more than you. I like okay. the ideas behind it. I didn't like the execution as much. I, I don't like the ideas at all. And I was very amused at parts. Like <laughs> I, I had fun with it. And yeah. especially some some parts I was excited what's gonna be the next bad part. Like I was like, <laughs> okay. like kind of intrigued. Like right. some things happened, I was like, I'm genuinely excited what's gonna happen next. Yeah. And then especially the ending, mm. I was very curious how this was going to end. Oh. <laughs> and it was so funny. I was like, this is so faithful to the trilogy. The trilogy couldn't end, for God's sake, it couldn't end. And it was yeah. ending like, over and over again. And this yeah. book literally ended like seven times. <laughs> It's just so stupid. Yeah, okay. I was so, I was so, like, tickled and, like, laughing about it so much. I was like, so I guess it's gonna end now. Mm -mm. Do you want to end this five more times? Mm, let's go it more. Let's go over this again. And do you wonder what happened next? Mm, okay. Mm. And then it ended again. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. <laughs> well, we'll get, yeah, we'll get to that. But the ending the, was the hilarious. Ending, yeah. I was so, uh, it was funny. The ending was... So stupid. It was so I funny. It. it was so bad. It was great. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it was almost, in some parts, maybe that's why I like it. It, it felt like a B-movie that was so bad as fun. I mean, before we were talking about, like, <coughs> Batman and Robin, yeah. like, to me, that's a B-movie which is so bad that it's fun. Like, it's just ridiculous. This one, it was so bad because it was also trying to be smart. I would recommend it for people who are morbidly curious and they <laughs> just want to have fun with, like, a nonsense sci-fi story mm -hmm. that's, in my view... Mm -hmm. kind of has noble goals to be very creative about it mm -hmm. and it kind of went haywire in the process but the, mm -hmm. the idea was there like appreciate the idea behind it we'll, we'll talk about this but okay i think there was something good about the plan to write this okay but then it didn't happen at all no <laughs> it didn't As per our tradition, in our previous episodes about the free body problem, we have awarded depression points. Unfortunately, on this one, you're gonna have to award the different kinds of points. So you can have a guess. 
and I'll let you know how many and what points exactly these are at the end. Let's get into spoilers. Yes, please. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, how do you even start with this? Well, okay, let, let, I know how to start. <laughs> okay, so please start. Okay, so first, there is the first chapter. Mm -hmm. Should we talk about the ending already? Or, like, okay, <laughs> so in the first chapter, essentially, the author is talking about himself, like mm -hmm. recreating this world because he just wants to live in... Like in this universe, a little bit longer, even though it's at the end. Yeah. And so it's, I thought, ah, okay, you know, like he's talking about himself. Okay. <laughs> now, th this could be okay, like whatever. It's, this is what bothers me about it. The character who represents um, the author mm -hmm. in this uh, in this first chapter is Yun Tin Ming, mm -hmm. who's the main character of the it's book. The guy whose uh, brain was shot in space, if you don't remember. Right. And in the book, in the, like, he's the main character, and, like, I hate to say, like, because it's such a cliche, but he's kind of a, a Gary Sue. Yes. Like, he's super, like, any, like, take any good adjective you want to apply to so, it. Like, sorry he, to interrupt, like but he is my question about this was, is it worse than non-existent character arcs? <laughs> it, it is worse, yeah. <laughs> like, anyway, okay. like, he, like, he's super perfect, and, like, he gets everything, and, <laughs> you know, and, he, like, the, the author is using him, like, in this first chapter, and then, in the end, yeah. we find out that, actually, he is Chi Chin Liu. We will talk about the ending more later, but, <laughs> like, you said he was very humble, like, to me, it's, like, exactly the opposite, essentially, he's saying, oh, you know, myself insert, not only is, like, the, basically, the superhero of the universe, yeah. But also, he's the actual author I'm, I, I admire. Like, the, what? I can't hold off anymore. I have to say this. Yeah. I was playing to say this a lot. Yeah. But the guy inserted himself. So yeah. first, he gets the girl. Yeah. Then he gets, like, to, to creep on the girl in the shower, literally. Yeah. Yeah. Then he becomes a god. Yeah. Then he has, a, like, a godlike, like, constructed, super shining body and appears yeah. without a t-shirt. Yeah. And then becomes the writer himself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was insane. I was laughing so much. I was like, what else can you do? You are literally a god now. Yeah. You are literally traveling through space in 10 dimensions, being like the, a super amazing ultra being. Yeah. Then you have to show yourself without a shirt how muscular you are. <laughs> what else can you do? You become Sishin Liu himself. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you're focusing so much on the shirtless part. Like, that was so ridiculous. Like, whatever. <laughs> At that point in the story, he has literally traveled send it space itself yeah. and he has to talk about his pecs yeah. what? <laughs> I mean why not he also had a nice uh, nice tan <laughs> yes and he has a, a, he yeah. has a tanned muscular body yeah. what? Yeah. I was laughing so much I couldn't deal with it <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sorry, I, I completely no, no, skipped no. forward, but this was hilarious. That's <laughs> fine. This was already worth it for me, like the, yeah. like, the enjoyment part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this arc from like, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Continue. Uh, no. Anyway, that's that's how it starts. Yeah. Then you know there is the first part, which is Kim and uh, AA. So this part is called the past within time. Yeah. The beginning, the first few chapters, I didn't like too much how they were written because they were constantly shifting between flashback and him telling the story and like they're kind of like having a conversation. I mean, just pick one. But anyway. Worst part of the book. I think For this me. was the best part oh, of the book. <laughs> yeah, by far. Because the first few chapters, I do think that some of the retconning he does and some of the explanation he he gives do serve a purpose to make some parts of the third book. They, they complete some parts, some holes in the third book. Mm -hmm. Because in the third book, there were some things which were kind of dumb. Yeah. You know, we knew that the brain was shot off and like, mm -hmm. it, like the trajectory actually was not as what they had calculated. Mm -hmm. So how did they catch it? Like, why did they catch it? Mm -hmm. Like all of those things. And here, you know, they fill that hole. Or some of the other things, like, why do the Tris Lawrence like him? Mm. Like, yeah, how, how did Tris Lawrence change thanks to him? Or yeah. Because, because of him? That was kind yeah, of... Yeah, that was kind of interesting. Some of the things he explains, I think they made a lot of sense. I just meant to say, yeah. we didn't say what happened. So they just sit with AA. Yeah. And they just talk. Yeah. And they sit... And they're the, naked. 
<laughs> yes. They basically like pretend Adam and Eve on the yeah. planet in the middle of nowhere in the dark domain after everything's gone to hell. Like basically the a book, you know, the third book when they finally met there. Yeah. So that's where they are now. And he talks about his memories with Tris Lawrence and she asks him yeah. and all this and that's why they explain all this. And the plot itself, it, besides the memories, is just them sitting and doing nothing and being naked and having sex. <laughs> and then he kills himself. <laughs> well, that's much later. <laughs> so before that, like... <laughs> they both have to share, like, the secrets of their past. And in Yoon Jaming's case, essentially says that he, like, first... Okay, I talked about, like, the the pirates very fixed, you know, some holes in the story, and I like that. Then there is, like, all the mental torture and everything else, which, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I thought it was okay. It was, first it was okay, but... So, so they torture him in order to make him agree to help him. To help yeah. them. And also to understand, like, humans. And in the meantime, AA is sitting next to him. And yeah. she's asking him. Yeah. And talking to him. And it's like the epitome of a dumb woman character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, she was so dumb. She like, at the beginning, like, the first question is, like, oh, do you like... Who do you like more, me or her? So, and you're like, what? what? So, what? please, Mr. Uh, uh, Bioshu, if you, for some miraculous reason, are listening, <laughs> don't write women characters anymore which is this was painful <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and she was always like oh did it hurt oh mm-hmm. don't tell me oh did no, don't tell me oh did it hurt oh, so, so, I'm so sorry don't tell me oh. I was yeah. like fucking shut up <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was really bad and then and then at one point he mm-hmm. has described how they tortured him and mm-hmm. the worst thing they tortured him with was that he cooked and ate his daughter you know uh, well he had like all of these nightmares yeah. and one of the nightmares was it was like an apocalypse or something yeah. like that. and he had a like a daughter but yeah so yeah, that was a thing that yeah. happened also what happened with like AA being super dumb yeah. <laughs> he was telling all kinds of stories yeah. and at one point you know how in the second or third book he mm-hmm. writes those stories to send yeah. Yeah, like, like, yeah. so, so he was like I, I could tell you thousands of stories I have imagined millions yeah like the best stories ever. The best like, stories ever. like again I don't mind too much the idea that you know he, because it was only a brain and it was being tortured like he had gone through these nightmares and then through mm-hmm. dreams I don't mind that it's just that it was way too exaggerated. Yes. Like, yes. Like, it doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I, it's as I've, if, if I had lived for 10,000 years. So, or like, so. all of these things, like, I have had, like, the best dreams, like, oh, like, flowers, flowers, flowers. I was laughing about this so much again because uh, he was like, let me tell you, like let that. me tell yeah. you how I thought of all these stories. Mm. First of all, I have uh, written all these stories that were released in, on Earth and nobody mm. knew the secret messages in them. Yeah. Not only that, also, yeah. my stories are amazing. And also, <laughs> all the stories that the Trislans wrote, they're yeah. mine. I yeah. wrote those. And also, yeah. <laughs> and then she said, yeah. would you like to tell me more stories, dear? And I was like, no, no, no don't say more stories. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please, no. Yeah, no. No more fairy tales. <laughs> And I was I was waiting. I was like, I swear to God, if he's gonna say himself that my stories are pretty good, if I am a writer myself, yeah. like like since you did in the other book, I'm gonna yeah. just like flip out. Yeah. So he didn't say that. Thank God. So yeah, that, that was something. So that there was. I mean, there were some good points and bad points. <laughs> <laughs> the the worst part was by far his meeting with like the the, the super being yeah the super being like the spirit so, of the master so they so they torture him then they yeah. like revive him yeah. then he talks about what Trisolans look like with kid. Uh, that that's like also that's when he connected. meets the yeah 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 and he also talks about uh, what it looked like where he lived and how he had like this piece of space somewhere yeah, yeah so he meets this being so at one point essentially he says that it's his fault if y- humanity failed because he has saved what's her name not a no, no, like yeah, his yeah, original the, love the, the, the main character yeah the like he's, because she was about to be killed by wade and yes. thanks to him she was saved and so he thinks that that's his fault that she was saved and so because she was saved she became the sore holder and so the mm-hmm. plan the plan worked <laughs> this is the part where they yeah. discuss how he like snooped and creeped yeah. on people in the shower yeah which like whatever <laughs> that's the part I laughed at too yeah. much <laughs> that, that's okay <laughs> so much, um, so dumb. The, the meeting with the spirit so first like the meeting with the spirit was already like kind of strange like so, what the hell so they're flying in space and yeah. then the spirit like goes into the Trisolan ship yeah. without anybody noticing and reveals himself only yeah. to him yeah 
Because he said that Julius Laren's brain is not capable of getting these idea abstractions. And this part I like. Yeah, I, I, li- I mean, I like the concept of idea abstractions. Uh, like the idea, the concept of, you know, this being... Like just, you know, him g- being given this quest is okay. I, fine, I don't mind too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about later about that in later parts. And then, yeah, it reveals how Julius Laren's look like. That's the part where I was like, oh, this is so <laughs> stupid. I got this spoiled. I knew this already. Oh, you knew this already? Because okay, I, I didn't. I heard that they would describe what they looked like. Okay, yeah, I heard that. And I heard that they were miniature. Okay, like I didn't hear that. Or yeah. That was so stupid. <laughs> like, so incredibly stupid. <laughs> I don't mind it. I, I, I did because, okay, because they always say that humans are bugs. So actually they are bugs, so they have an inferiority complex. Like, again, like, why? Why does it have to be that way? C- complete tangent, but I love in the TV show, they have constant shots of miniature creatures crawling on stuff, and okay. it's, like, meaning nothing, but it okay. means a lot of the time. <laughs> it's like the visual, like, there's always an ant crawling on something, and they, like, zoom on the ant, and then they cut away. Right. Nobody knows any better, so that's okay. nice in the TV show. Anyway. <laughs> okay, but besides this, it bothered me so much, first, because I think it was just a uh, simplifying of Trees Alliance. Like, yeah, th- so they're super small super tiny alien race. Okay, how do they build all of these things if they're so small and they're so stupid? And also it says that essentially they're kind of like a hive mind. Hmm. But in but the first really? book, yeah. like in the first book when they're talking about like their society and everything That doesn't else, make sense. Yes. Yeah. And even in this book yeah. they say that they have a mind of their own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but they are also hive minds, so yeah. I guess they kind of both. And then they talk about like they had like a revolution and... Yeah, I was disappointed that it wasn't more about this. Like, he kind of mm. says what they look like. Yeah. They, he says that the Slarans are horrified of people because they're so big. And that's it. Yeah. So, so if you start... If you if you bring this up, mm. you'd better, A, use it for something. There was yeah. no reason for this. Yeah. Like, that's not used in the story yeah. at all. Second of all, you can do something with it. And, well, and okay. Not at least explain it a little bit more. Like, what do they look like anyway? Like, like one can... of the biggest problems in this book in general, one of the... <laughs> best aspects and in a way kind of like terrifying aspects of the original trilogy was that humans considered themselves highest form of intelligence Mm. on our planet Mm. and so we're so like proud of ourselves and our intelligence and so on but then you know the first time we enter into contact with some aliens we are again as they say so many times nothing but bugs like they are so much more advanced Mm. than us that we are irrelevant and then, even so, in the first two books, the Trisolarans are supposed to be like this invincible foe. Hmm. And you realize that on a galactic scale, you know, even the Trisolarans hmm. are like... Yeah, of course. Not that... Obviously. Not, yeah. Yes. Amazing. I think this is an amazing point of the original trilogy. <laughs> in this book, humans are kind the of, best. Kind of great, yeah. Yeah, the, the, they are the me. best. Yeah, the like, points why they are the best? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, and oh yeah, Trisolarans actually always... You know, they always have their small things. Let me things. tell you, I, with my singular mind and my simple brain, I yeah. have fooled them and I have compartmentalized a place in my mind even yeah. they couldn't find. And yeah. my stories were so advanced, they couldn't understand. Yeah, and it was and like, oh, everything I... from me. Yeah, and yeah. They are and so much better than them. Yeah, and it was like, yeah, I remember like this teaching of like some yoga, whatever. Yes. It was like, what? So they tortured what? him by like super advanced alien technology yeah. connected literally into his brain and he yeah. meditated it and then he was okay yeah so when the being appears mm-hmm. that's basically the plot point that drives the rest of the book like the reason why things happen yeah so far we just recapped like what happened to him and now that's gonna be like what actually he did yeah and when the being appears there was a yeah. moment that made me laugh so much so they the, the being appeared and i kind of like the description of what the being looked like in mm-hmm. 10 dimensions yeah. kind of creative I, I was into it very much at this point okay and then the, the other thing was like okay so but I want to ask some questions. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, are you an extraterrestrial? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yes. And I was like, what? I, I completely, my, my brain removed. So first of all, let's not f- even think about that it's a stupid question. But let's think about what does it even mean to be an extraterrestrial from a point of view of a ten-dimensional being who has never heard of Earth or what? What does Terra even mean? What does what? What are you asking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, you're the only human who's existed in forever at this time and point in space. Mm-hmm. There are no other people. What does it even mean to be extra Terra out of Earth when mm-hmm. Earth doesn't even exist? It's been flattened into the no. At that point, no, not not yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> all the questions yeah. you could have asked yeah. <laughs> like what uh, 
Yeah. And then the second question was, are you God or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultra facepalm points at this point. I mean, uh, I guess are you God? Like, I guess it was all right as a question. <laughs> I mean, it's fair enough. <coughs> Okay. Okay. I couldn't deal with this. Yeah. After that, yeah, you know, so he gets his big quest, which is at this point, it's just inside his brain, but he doesn't really know. Hmm. And then there is like the worst part of the first half of okay. the book, which is. Which one? It's AA Spast, which is. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to talk about? Can we just skip? So let me just say that we yeah. find out that not only is AA the f- the ideal like partner, yeah. and they also had a child that died, which like that she had a miscarriage actually. But yeah. we also find out that she's a clone of somebody called Wei Wei. Yeah, great name. I don't know how good this name is in China, but Wei Wei is like what you say when you answer the phone. It's like mushy mushy. In, so in, so AA yeah. is, used to be Wei Wei, yeah. awesome. Yeah. But they cloned her. Why? <laughs> Do you remember? Yeah, because she essentially spent all her money and she was beautiful. And <laughs> because she was beautiful. Yeah. So they cloned her. And the only reason she's alive is because she's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, all of that had zero sense. Like the fact that she had to be a clone and they, they had known each other since childhood. Like, why? 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 Ultimate fails, fails point. Yeah, like... like this was completely... This why? Part was, this part why was, did you need to create this connection? This part was exhausting. Yeah. It felt like every single character in this story was going to be yeah. somehow connected to the other story. Yeah. So we also didn't say that he gets a magical ring of power. Yeah. Well, yeah, from, from the <laughs> spirit, he gets like a, his magical ring, um, which also he gets like the universe, like the mini universe. So at this point, he yeah. has the ring, mm-hmm. but he's spending his time on the planet sitting next to A doing nothing. Yeah. Is he dumb? No, he can't use the ring. He said that uh, three days after they they landed, the, the ring disappeared. Oh, I yeah. forgot that part. Yeah. But but before it disappeared, mm-hmm. he could have used it for something. Yeah, he was using it for something. What did he use it for? Oh, like, like, did, he, did he make a house? The, the, he could the, literally he create used... people <laughs> with this ring. Well, yeah, but he used it to make like some stuff. Probably he didn't expect the ring to disappear, I guess. Like, we learn in this point that the ring could materialize things, could literally materialize his thoughts. Yeah. It could transport him into any place. It could even like stop time or something. No. It's like there was some point, something they mentioned. Anyway, <laughs> he could have literally be like, oh, let me like... Reset Earth on this planet or something, and the ring would have done it. Like he could have been just like, oh, let me make a city of people. I'm not sure. Like, he could I think that's what things. they implied was possible. Uh, I think at one point sure. they say the power of the master maker, whoever person, yeah. is to completely recreate anything. And they also say that the information about literally everything that ever existed is mm-hmm. contained in somewhere that you can access with this ring. Okay. So well, he could have literally been like, oh, I want a steak. Mm. And it would be there. Like, right. Materialized immediately. Okay. Well, I mean, it is true that in the first chapter, he uses it to create like that small word. But probably at this point, like he didn't really understand how to use it. And there is a point in the story where they are starving or something? Or yeah. they don't have anything? Yeah, because they, they, like the ring is not there anymore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, like it apparently okay. disappeared. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So at this point, the first part of the book kind of ends they, they've talked about all the things and they both die yeah well I, I think at the, at the start of the second part years have passed and now they are old and mm-hmm. uh, AA has died mm-hmm. which is mentioned like kind of like oh it happened there's like no build up to it no between like like when she dies mm. it was kind of like oh and then she was dead well I mean yeah she, she died of old age yeah, and it, yeah. Was, it was okay I guess it's okay but then, yeah. then then he was like oh I have lost all my curiosity I don't even want to go to this place universe I can like go into this pocket universe and I can yeah. do whatever I want and oh but I don't have I'm an old man I don't have curiosity I mean to be honest I don't mind that at this point after what he's been through mm. uh, I think he should be a better person. Well, I mean, I mean it was kind of all like he had his life. Like, he, he, I, I don't mind. Like, he lived his life. Okay, so then this part I accept, but the part I don't accept is how he came to himself. Yeah, that's true. That was yeah. in, insane. That was stupid. It yeah. was like, okay, so I guess I'll die. So he could have done so many things yeah. to die. Yeah, he could have just jumped into like a lake. He could have just done whatever else than this. Yeah. This is the stupidest suicide I've seen in any story. <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? Why this? Of all things. 
<laughs> I didn't think so hard about it. I was just like, yeah, I, like for sure he's not dead, so whatever. So he took a wire mm. and he jabbed himself in the neck yeah. and he just bled to death? Yeah. What the fuck? From all the things you could have done, you take a piece of a stick or wire or something and you jab it into your neck? Yeah. How dumb are you? Like, this is the most painful thing you could have done. What is more painful than this? Like, ah, you could burning have, alive. You could, I think that's that's better. No, I, I don't think so. I would rather burn alive than what? than jab myself in the neck and then slowly die. Okay. Like you can suffocate in the air, in the hot air, and you, then you pass out and you're done. Yeah. In this, you're just like lying there, like mm-hmm. alone on a planet in the middle of nowhere, mm-hmm. and then you're just like bleeding out for two hours. Like what the hell? Fair enough. <laughs> Well, anyway, he doesn't <laughs> I was, die. I was so mad about this. <laughs> like, why this? I even reread it. I was like, excuse me? Is this what you said? <laughs> I, I like, it, did you do this? I, 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 it's interesting that you focus so much on it. I was just like, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, was like, I didn't think like for two seconds about it. And then I, for some reason, I started to be very naive. I was mm. so naive. I thought that he would not be in the book anymore. And really? I was like... Yes, next part of the book, and there's going to be somebody else. Of course not. No. Okay. <laughs> He's resurrected again. And the part two is called The Way of Tea. Yeah. Which I thought would be nice, but... Because you like tea. Yes. I also like tea. But no. No. I didn't like this part very much. No. Yeah, so... <laughs> like, uh, you know, he's born again, he has a super body. And, uh, so the many, many magical super dimensional being yeah. resurrects him and gives him the ring again. Mm-hmm. You, you hear, dummy, you lost this ring. Yeah. You were supposed to do something, right? So do it now. Yeah, I think it was probably the idea was, you know, let's wait until he dies and then okay. he's resurrected. And he has like the mental seal, but then he also doesn't. like. <laughs> I forgot that. Yeah. <laughs> That's so Did he dumb. have a mental seal? He had sort of a mental seal, essentially. He was forced to do the master's bidding. Oh, yeah. But then right. after like five seconds, he's like, yeah, but I can say blah, 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 blah. And that kind of breaks my mental Did seal. Did he actually say mental seal? Yeah, he says it's like the mental oh, seal. Oh, like the mental seal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember that now. I completely just blocked that out of my memory. Yeah. So he goes into the mini universe and he meets... He, he creates like the fake sophon. Yes. And this is the time to mention the thing that... I'm furiously shaking my head if you can't see me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like we didn't mention this uh, from the first part that Sophon's uh, look oh, like comes from uh, his favorite oh. porn star who was a Japanese porn star. I'm gonna which... like do this. I hope you can hear what I'm doing. Okay. So... <laughs> Already, like in the in the third book of the original trilogy, I always thought it was kind of regrettable the fact that, mm-hmm. of course, who is uh, you know the the super evil alien representation is using yeah, yeah, yeah. like Japanese uh, yes. clothes and and everything else. So okay, and now in this fourth book they make it even stronger. Like mm. yeah, you know they chose it because they an actress who looked like uh, a Japanese because. The three Solarans essentially studied the history of Japan and mm. essentially Japan history. <laughs> like, like what, what, I think that was my biggest like what the fuck moment. Like, I, are you seriously talking about? Like, they were like, you know, uh, they saw that in recent history Japan had invaded China and committed atrocities, but then essentially made everyone forget about it. And mm. I'm like, okay, yeah, th- that's true. Sure, I, I understand. That's also like literally. Every country on earth? Mm. Yeah. So also... But like, the, what the fuck? Everything is thanks to Yun Jiang Ming. Like, to yeah. look up to Sophon, thanks to him. Yeah. All the stories, thanks to him. The yeah. Solarans, we forgot to say, they had to study deception because yeah. of him. Yeah. He had to watch everything using the Sophons. Yeah. That's how he sneaked on women in the showers, that we didn't say, to watch them naked. Yeah. And he they admitted gave, it. They gave, like, a few Sophons to him. Yeah. Like, yeah, the man there is... Now he made this... Uh, yes, so this fake sophon. So he he makes like he meets like the super artificial intelligence or something. Yeah, yeah, which was like the artificial intelligence, man, like managing, like was the manager of the mini universe. Mm. I forgot to mention one of my favorite points or my my dumbest points, okay. just to mention more faithful points. Yeah. So when they talk about how Tris Lawrence learned from Yun Jiang Ming, he talks he starts talking about cloud computing. Ah, Remember yeah. cloud computing? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he was like, they couldn't comprehend the human intellect. Yeah. The only way they could understand deception and how people think was cloud computing. <laughs> and then I was like, excuse me, do they have computers now? And then he was like, okay, so if they wanted to have a conversation mm. and go on a trisolite on date, yeah. do you ever that part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they want to like have a conversation where they deceive each other, they have to use cloud computing. Well, they, they, they use like this special, <laughs> special like chip which allows them to lie. Yes. Yeah. So they have cloud computing chips now. Yeah. Like, what? Do you, they had to banish them. Yeah. Do you even know what cloud computing means? Yeah. Like, like the writer, like yeah. what? that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I thought it was a little interesting. <laughs> Like the fact that you know they they create this thing to lie, like I mean, did you mean like a repository of information? Did you mean like processing power? Did you mean AI? Did you mean neural networks? What did you mean? Cloud computing is just computers connected together. There is yeah. nothing in this that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, so, no, no. so there is this artificial intelligence that's from the master, mm-hmm. and it's supposed to assist Yuan Jiangming. Yeah, and he because he's a seeker. Well, so he is the seeker now. He's a seeker, yeah. He has to find a lurker. Mm -hmm. They talk about the story of of the 10th dimension, Mm -hmm. which was, the 10th dimension essentially was perfect, everything was perfect, and the speed of light was infinite. Mm -hmm. So everything, like, there was no time because everything happened, Mm -hmm. like, simultaneously. Which, okay, interesting like this concept. Part. Yeah. This is my part that is the best of the book, probably, for me. Okay, and then, you know, the lurker wanted to get freedom, essentially, Mm -hmm. and so wanted to create time, and so reduced everything to nine dimensions. They also said that the less dimensions, the more the time... Yeah, because essentially the speed of light keeps reducing. Mm-hmm. So I like that part. They kept saying how it kind mm-hmm. of reduces into mm-hmm. like less and less and less, and it's kind of more exciting for the beings, like for this yeah. guy, the lurker. He wants yeah. to like have something out of his life, because in the 10th mm-hmm. dimension, all everything is perfect, everything is constant, yeah. then nothing changes. So his motivation behind all this is do something, like, yeah. you know, kind of makes sense. Kind of a human impulse, but okay. Okay, all right, here is my problem. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> this is an interesting concept in theory, okay? Mm-hmm. But as you said, the problem is that then the master and the lurker, especially the lurker, they get a personality which doesn't make yes, any sense. Yes, yes, Like, yes, with yes. all of... What we're talking about. Yes. And there is the other thing where, like, the master is essentially omnipowerful. And yes. it's like, yeah, I can revert the universe in 10 dimensions, like, at will. Um, what? Yes. Oh, excuse me? Exactly. I would, what? Yeah, I've completely Does forgotten. this make any sense? Have you forgotten from the books we read before that yeah. it cannot be done? You can't go, can't go up the dimension because it's already been yeah. destroyed? But besides, like, even if, let's say you can do it, okay? Forget about the fact that... It was said you couldn't. Let's say you can. Why does this being need a human to do anything? Uh, because, oh, because he can't find the lurker. Why can't he find the lurker? I like, the, he can revert the universe and he can't find... I think the reason like, was that he doesn't want to be revealed. There's a plot point that yeah, he starts like to he do says, stuff. Yeah, like he says, he can't so like, he he be revealed and blah, blah, blah. All of that makes no sense. It makes sense if we were talking about beings with the minds of, of, of a human. Mm. But... If we're talking about like something that existed in a universe where like light speed was infinite, hmm. essentially it can see every scenario possible. Like how can it ever lose? Like it could check like every single yes. atom in a universe instantaneously because like there's no limit to speed. Also, one point that makes it nonsensical is they constantly keep drilling home how the Trislarsons cannot lie and mm-hmm. everybody has to learn deception from people. Yeah. So I guess he also cannot lie because if he could, he could have just lied to the other guy the and tricked him. Can. <laughs> like the lurker yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like... why can't this guy lie? Like if he could lie, then he could very simply do anything without the people he... Okay, anyway. Yeah. The, the... So this is what I meant at the beginning. Like I like this idea for the story, like mm. the 10 dimension of the universe being perfect and mm. somebody making a decision to not make it perfect so it would progress somewhere. Yeah. I like this idea, yeah. but how it's executed doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. And you know, there is the when we get to see the the lurkers like personalities because the lurker essentially split at itself mm-hmm. into all of these smaller like, parts. <laughs> which their names are ridiculous. I don't know. Besides the names which are ridiculous, they're just numbers, but the way they interact, it made me think, you know the classic like action movie where there are like the two 
security guards watching uh, like security monitors and mm-hmm. they're bored and eating donuts. Oh yes, this, this, yes. Like they sure, have a yes. conversation like that. Like, what is this? Yes. Like why uh, why are they having this conversation? Yeah, like talking this? about like so they keep yeah. trying to one up each other. So the yeah. worker wants to destroy the master and yeah. he wants to reduce the universe yeah. into dimensions. And the master wants to stop him and restore the universe into ten dimensions, which is perfect. And he can't do it because as soon as he starts doing it, it takes time and that reveals him and the worker can destroy him then. Yeah. So they like try to trick each other and they like watch what each other is doing. Yeah. And then they have a conversation like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the two lurkers, <laughs> like minds, have a conversation yeah. like that. It's like, it was so stupid. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense from any point of view. Yeah. So if they're the two minds, why would they talk? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, why would they talk about this? And then, okay, why would they have a human personality? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it was so dumb. So to go back to the story, Yun Jamin gets his quest and essentially immediately understands more than anyone else. Mm-hmm. Like the master. It's amazing. Yeah. Like he's super amazing. He immediately understands like the biggest secrets and everything else. Okay. <laughs> and then he clearly asks, you know, are there any other humans? And they said, yeah, the chances of there being another human are like so slim. It's impossible. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then he's sent to look for another, another seeker because they say that there are very few seekers left. And mm-hmm. because either they are dead or they gave up on their quest or they went crazy they went mm-hmm. rogue whatever and there's only this one which had some idea or where to look for mm-hmm. the lurker and millions of years pass mm. and he has found the, the other seeker who of course is a human that and of part, course yeah. is the one in the prologue of, of the so third that book. was yes okay <sighs> So that's the woman who was in one of the prologue of the other books, where yeah. she was in medieval times, and she yeah. was like a witch that could reach through space because the bubble of four dimension was somewhere. Yeah. And in we Constantinople. Get, and we get the backstory of her, but later... The, yeah, yeah, at the uh, end they, they explain something, but I mean, it's not so important. Like, yeah, yeah. They meet, and she had a hint that this group, I forgot the name, but a group of aliens was the ones uh, hiding the lurker. So they destroyed them. Okay. Then they get another group of aliens. They get the, the um, idea that another group of aliens might be the ones in charge of covering for the lurkers. So okay. they destroy them. And then finally they get to the last group, which was the ones that they had flattened, like the solar system. Mm-hmm. And uh, Or I think, no, they were the fourth one. So they destroyed three races of aliens. Just committing genocide. Of yeah, the yeah, yeah. Alien. And then they get to the last one and then they destroy, <laughs> they destroy the last one. Mm-hmm. And that's like the one which is described. Essentially, they make it fall into a um, black hole. Hmm. Yeah, and this at this point, secret... they talk about like all kinds of like groups yeah. of aliens. Yeah. And the names, I was laughing so much. Yeah. I, I, at, this, at this point... But some of them, are like, they were already in the, in the original trailer. Was it? I forgot yeah. this. Some of them were. So, so were there the zero homers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I, but I think in the, in the translation I had of the third book they were called like the returners or but something. the same guy is translating it so he should know how to translate himself. yeah i know i know stuff. but he might have changed his mind and then there are the the star pluckers star pluckers are the humans <laughs> star pluckers are, are just the, the galactic humans in the... star pluckers was also in the third book was it oh, yeah. I forgot all like things. you know the 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 guy who sends the the thing the vector to transform the solar system into two dimensions mm. he named the humans star pluckers oh i forgot yeah that. because they were using the sun to send the uh, coordinates of things yeah. and so he said it's as if they are plucking the sun oh, as, okay. a, as a guitar essentially okay that's why he called humans okay. star pluckers okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to say, from this point on, the book just devolved into like techno bubble for me. So many things happened, which so stupidly named things and like completely nonsensical descriptions of stuff. Yeah. And also like played on religion and like Christianity yeah. somehow and angels and stuff. And I was like, what's happening? Is my brain going to mush or something? <laughs> and I started writing down like different like phrases. And and for example, at some point he says. Uh, star pluckers breed faster than matrix insects. Yeah. Then there was like interstellar worms usually shoot mm-hmm. at constra- constant speeds or something. I was mm-hmm. like, what? Are I? And then, <laughs> then something happened and he said, these rings ripped through the other rings as though the light of pixies. What are pixies doing you now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> then at one point there was a space turtle carrying a world on its back somewhere. Not a world, like a city. What? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, whatever. It's just... Yeah. What else can you stuff into this? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't... I couldn't deal with it. Yeah. And then but I, this is already a third part of it. Oh, sorry. Okay. But, I mean, it's fine. The second part is just, like, big explanation about, like, the ten, ten dimensions and everything else. Yeah. The third part is... So, in like, the second part, do we, like, get to relive the whole thing again? Like, when he talk about, like, how they could restart everything, but it yeah. would be the same? Is it the second uh, part? I... Maybe. I thought it was when they explained... I think it's in the third part. Like when he made Sophon again. So she said she has all the information and she couldn't even restart time or something. And they talk about why it wouldn't make sense. And uh, no, no, no. They said that once it goes back to 10 dimensions, mm. it would it will restart time. Yes. Yeah. And the, But I, I think at this point they are not saying... They haven't said yet. Whenever they say it, it's yeah. a plot point for the later part. But yeah. why did we have to... Like, she said, okay, so it would mean that everything would happen exactly the same. Could have friended it right there. Yeah. But there was, like, the whole chapter. Yeah. And she was like, so it would mean that this would happen. Yeah. And it would mean that this would happen. And yeah. that would mean that this would happen. Yeah. And she literally said the whole story again. Yeah. What? <laughs> What's happening now? Are we, like, retelling the story because you have to fill space? Yeah. What's that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was so bad. Yeah, yeah. That's, the central part, like... Yeah. Like this wasn't even bad, like bad ideas bad. Yeah. This was just unnecessary filler bad. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. So they destroyed three races of aliens. They get to the last one and then they destroy <laughs> they destroy the last one. Mm-hmm. And that's like the one which is described. Essentially, they make it fall into a um, black hole. Hmm. It was yeah. so prolonged, this this part. And I was so yeah. confused why. What's that, happening? Like, it's... Whatever. So, like, so this king character, mm-hmm. who's a woman? And yeah. What? Why? So, essentially, like, they believe that, you know, the lurker had left them their, their technology to to destroy the master. Mm-hmm. And they had all of this religion about all of these things. And this king was, was a woman. Mm-hmm. was a female, I guess. At this point, it starts to... F- like shift into like religious and other colors. Yeah, something? essentially they had this religion. That that's like the Dune reference. That you okay. know, they, it's like the fake religion, the fake prophecies which were instilled mm-hmm. by the lurker to protect itself. Because the lurker said, "Oh, I'm dying. You need to. I'll give. You, I'll give you this technology. Yeah, and you have yeah, to yeah. protect it and everything else." And he's called the Angel of Death or something. The Angel of Death is is Yun Tian Ming. Oh, no, no. it's how they Sorry. call the Yun Tian Ming. I was so at this point. I was like, "Who's the Angel of Death?" Yeah, it's, it's Yun Tian Ming. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. After he's eradicated so many civilizations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, there is like this super prolonged part about this world getting destroyed. And, and we how... have to talk about this because there is a yeah. part I was laughing about so hard. Yeah. So somebody falls in love with the King Lady person? Well, it, like the, the singer who was the guy who destroyed the solar system. Mm-hmm. Apparently he's still like he was a no one in the in the third yeah. book. Like apparently still alive after millions okay, of years. I accept that. Yeah, whatever. And um, you know, they have this special connection. So <laughs> even though he's on the other side of the universe, like he can get so, here. So this is at the point where their yeah. world and their yeah. universe is ending completely. And yeah. They're all falling into black hole kind of space. Yeah. So they stand together, this lurker guy, sorry, the the singer guy yeah. and this king person woman yeah. guy who yeah. is referred to as a king the whole time and then yeah. at one point they just say oh it's a queen it's a woman yeah but they still call him and, and call and her why king. nobody king. explains uh, okay so they they like yeah. okay let's sing songs to each other yeah. like, that's that's very really yeah and then they understand something. that the songs are like Because he, he like he loved singing, and so he, sing, he sang a song, and and she was like, "Oh, I wrote that song like a million years ago." Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, yeah, well, well, maybe. Oh, uh, now I understand the meaning of the song." And is this song like a human song? No, no, no. It's a song by. Is this song like a sound song? The audio? Is like, this audio? What are maybe. you talking about? Anyway, they have, like, feelings. Yeah. And how they see how the other person is feeling, yeah. it was ridiculous. Do you yeah. remember? <laughs> yeah. They have, like, a cogitation uh, yeah. organ? Or yeah. A... Cogitation organ. It's essentially their brain. And, yeah. and they, like, say something, and then, yeah. oh, she showed her cogitation organ a little. Yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what did she yeah. Do? Essentially, you know... Of course, at the end, Singer and, like, the Queen falls for Singer. Like, the world is getting destroyed and they have, like, one hour left before it's destroyed. End of the universe. 
Like not the, the end of the universe. Like, like end, end of the planet. End of their world. Yeah. Uh, like end of their, from their point of view, the yeah. universe, end of their life and everything yeah. they have ever known. And they just have like cogitation, like the best cogitation fuck ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> and, you know, they, they, there was like this super prolonged and dramatic scene and whatever, which is like super pointless. And then after it finishes, you know, you get the two lurkers, um, mm. like the two minds of the lurker mm. being like, Oh no, she was our little pet and now she's dead. Yeah. What? She was so dumb. Haha, <laughs> she believed all of the. That bullshit. was also so dumb. I like, told why them. did we need this comment on this? The reason why they made this comment, I think the point was to prove that, you know, all of this drama and all of these things, all of these sacrifices and so on, essentially are nothing compared to the scale of the, hmm. of the conflict between hmm. Lurker and the Master. And that even these alien race, which was so powerful to casually destroy the solar system, actually they're, again, just insects compared to mm-hmm. them. It's like, not... it's supposed to be scarier, but it isn't, mm. right? It, I, I just lose the sense of proportion. And so, this is the problem that this book has. When I was a child, I had this book, which was a fan fiction of, of Dragon Ball. <laughs> okay. And in this fan fiction, they kept bringing this to the extreme right mm. well, you know where there was like another enemy another enemy yeah. and the last enemy i think he destroyed the universe <laughs> <laughs> punched uh, the universe yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he destroyed the universe and it was so dumb uh, but i was a child and was kind was, of fun. yeah <laughs> so that was so dumb yeah. and then it's like okay yun Ming has destroyed like four alien civilizations mm. just kind of morally ambiguous i guess it's, it's anyway you know, they're like, oh, okay, well, too bad. <laughs> he even makes a joke about the fact that they're they're dead. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, you know, now we have to destroy the lurker. And then there is like all of the plan they make to destroy the lurker. It wasn't too bad, this plan. Like, you know, something happened. Like, it was kind of a plan. Okay, but it's somebody essentially like somebody else. billions of years passed. Yes. He spent billions of years fighting. Mm. Billions of years. It was less dumb, this part, than the other parts. I have to say. Are you serious? Yes. Like, he spent, it was like... he and this, and this woman, they spent billions of years mm. and they don't, didn't go crazy or anything like that. Even if they have like the super technology and everything else. Think about the memories you make in billions yes. of years. And he's still like, oh yeah, but I still love like AA and my other friends. Like what? After, <laughs> do you even remember how they look like and who they were? Like, you spent 50 years with them and you live billions of years. I assume time passes differently for them. Somehow. I mean, it is true. Yeah. Time does pass differently for but them. But it's still insane. Yeah. It was just like it was off screen. It was Everything was off yes, screen. Yes. Like, oh yeah, I destroyed all of these things and he found out all ab- about these plans and he understood like the big plan. Yeah. And uh, besides the fact that, of course, he is the only guy who understands everything. And mm. like this being which literally exists since in the beginning of the universe is not smart enough for him, mm-hmm. clearly. So anyway, um, they destroy the lurker. Yeah, they destroy the lurker and he creates this this new area. So and then he sends a fake message to get his friends out mm-hmm. of the mini universe mm-hmm. and he builds like the restaurant at the end of the Yeah, year. and it was like what? <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's what I was talking about about like internet. Yeah, okay. It's made for Reddit that and like the endless okay. eight. Okay. And like the porn star, like all of that. It's okay. Just so so internet culture. Okay. Yeah. So then the, the woman who was with him, she, no. what did she do? She disappears, so she stays there? Ah, like the, uh, she died. She died fighting the lurker. Oh, she, I yeah. forgot. So she died yeah. fighting the lurker. Okay, that's what yeah. I forgot. So then they all meet together. Yeah. And he becomes a buff god. Like, he was already, like... <laughs> but now he becomes especially buff and tanned. <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> you chiming extra hunky boy. <laughs> it's interesting that like the, the points in which you focus the most are really interesting to me, like how he killed himself and the fact that he was shirtless. <laughs> That's so bad. Like, like because uh, these points have no no reason and no place in this story. This is like an epic fantasy sci-fi, like ten dimensional ultra time surpassing fight, and then you yeah. talk about your pecs and, and your neck that bled out. Well, yeah. <laughs> this is so contrasting but that's why I like, focus on it because it's like why is this here <laughs> and yeah and they cloned AA again because clearly after billions of years he can't forget like AA who was a clone and now she's a new clone and yeah 
because I focus on these things because they are the only real things. Like they are the only like mm. things that are actually like sense. our sense real, which does don't fit at all. Like all the other stuff is completely unreal. Like, yeah. this is, like why? Is, okay, never mind. So, <laughs> <laughs> and you know they come out, and at the end of the third book, they had released that uh, small thing before the universe was collapsing, which apparently is a lie, and and you, they were the only. Okay, so. Mm. I think when we were talking about the third book, we were talking about how the small universes were just stupid. And in this book, at least, the small universes are not like a diffuse thing. They were just something that only the master could create. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I, that's better, but it's still stupid. So, then what happens? And then, you know, the uh, Sophon reveals that actually uh, she tricked them. She was an yeah. agent for the master and she tricked uh, them into releasing that matter. Because there was exactly the amount of matter that if it was minutes. removed from the from the universe then the universe would change which was again so what? stupid like yeah, why like what why why did they have to trick it why couldn't the master but at this point i didn't even know what yuan ming wanted like the master wanted to take this out of the universe yeah. and preserve it and then reset it yeah and, and yuan ming essentially was okay with it but then why did the Sophon have to trick them because Sophon wanted to change the universe but that's what the master wanted. No, no, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what the master wanted. Yeah, but but if everything was okay with that, why did he have to be tricked? Um, because like, first, because Yun Tianming didn't was not in the mini universe. Okay, the other two Chinese guys were. They were the ones who got tricked by so. So them, yes, yeah, but him. Like, but he was not tricked. Like it's just that he, like he was outside. Okay. So it, like, I, I, I didn't understand this part. I, I was like, why like, is he them? I had to trick them. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> the, everything was so dumb. Okay. This ending was so stupid. And then, yeah, essentially they left this matter out. And so because it's exactly the right amount, which was like 15 kilos. It's, but uh, exactly the remind of, to, to do what? To, to construct the Sophon in the next universe and to no, become so, the writer himself? or what? No, like the point was like the universe would change. So everyone is different and... Some people okay. don't even exist. So it doesn't matter how much? Like, why is it exact amount? Like, what? Yeah, but because it said that if it was less, then nothing would change. Ah. And if it was more, then the master wouldn't have enough matter to okay. be smart. Essentially, it would be stupid. Okay. Yeah. Maybe better I didn't understand this part. Yeah, there was... So everything resets. Yeah. Everybody's dead. Yeah. There no. is, like, the ending of, of uh, Jojo Part 6. Yeah, don't worry. Okay. People who, who will understand. <laughs> okay. Good job. So... At this point, the master is also completely eradicated. Yeah. And that's what he wanted. But he leaves behind a piece of something, somethingness. Yeah, like Sophon. And the Sophon. Yeah. And this Sophon now travels through the reset universe. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so book finished. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, but no, yeah. let me tell you like seven more stories about yeah. completely irrelevant bullshit. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I, I didn't mind, maybe that's like the only part about the ending I didn't mind. <laughs> okay. Like it's showing that now Trisolarians, like Trisolaris doesn't have three sons, only two, and so it's stable. Yeah. And so. It was like when you finish an RPG game and then they give you the recount of what happened to the characters. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I like that usually, right? <laughs> but this was so unnecessary and I don't didn't mind like does she died and yeah and I was yeah. like this is making it so much worse like wh why do we need to know how everybody died again well, only does she died <laughs> everything that happened in the universe was bad well like, no 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 Ye Wenjie like his sis her sister didn't die and they had like a normal okay, life. It was also bad, also good, but it was like the character from the medieval times that yeah. became the. Oh, well, she, she, yeah, she became yeah, she got a concubine. She horribly raped and. Yeah. What? Yeah, that was, that was really sad. Why did we need to do it? Yeah. And then Dashi was murdered. Yeah. What? And then, okay. <laughs> I was just listening to this and I didn't know how long it would be. Yeah. And I was just like, surely any second now this book will end. Yeah. Let me tell you another character story. And yeah, and then the last thing was then, yeah, yes. Chi Liu's essentially Yu Tianming in this universe is Chi Xing Liu and so that's why he knows this story and Sophon has told him his story. He has to write the books down. Yeah, and he writes the books. That was like, oh my god. Yeah, that <laughs> was like was, I, like I can't believe this. This, was the, this got published. I can't believe. At this point, like, I was like, "How this?" I was listening to this. I was like, "Just end, yeah. You, just please, just end yeah. already." And then, oh, end. And then, and then they did it. And I know that something would happen. And they didn't end in time. And they they went too far. They went. Too <laughs> 
it was so bad. <laughs> they dig too deep and they went too far and they they just completely yeah, crashed the it completely crashed at the, the, the end they yeah. couldn't crash more it's, it's what happened why did yeah even, i mean even as a joke this is bad like, yeah even if it's it was almost like, a dune reference about the sixth book which you will uh, never read i will read it yeah of course i will read it <laughs> But, but speaking of Dune, mm-hmm. I think this made me convinced yeah. that we should stop by for book six with Dune. There are many books. Yeah, yeah, there are the others by the, the sun. And if they are like this, which, <laughs> by the way, this is reviewed quite well, mm-hmm. and those books are reviewed very badly. Yeah, some people some people hate them, some people like them. But on average... The majority hate them. But on average, the Redemption of Time is uh, much higher regarded than the Dune yeah. stuff. So if that's... <laughs> Telling us anything. I think it's because like <laughs> not so many people read Redemption of Time compared to the Dune books. Quick and also because like people yeah. see Dune as something much more sacred. Okay, but screwing it up was but kind of like. Still, if this experience has taught us anything, it has taught us we should stop at six with Dune. <laughs> yeah, I, I stopped at six. <laughs> I, I did. Okay, so we've made it through this. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. <laughs> I, yeah. I just like it when knows what we didn't say and we like didn't talk about space lizards. You didn't talk about like yeah, space lizards were like the king yeah. race. <laughs> just call them lizards all of a sudden. The eyes of the king grew wider as she closed the seven other eyes or something. Yeah. Okay, we should stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say for yourself? Ah, uh, no. Oh my god. I didn't mind the shirtless scene. Oh my god. I did uh, hate the Haruhi Suzumiya reference. It was you know who that is? Necessary. Yeah, of course. Oh, I didn't know. That. I didn't yeah, that's a uh, you know. famous series of episodes in... Uh, again, it, it, this is part of internet culture. Oh. And everybody hates it. Uh, like, there is this anime called uh, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Oh, and essentially at one point there are eight episodes which are exactly the same episode repeated eight times oh they talked about the oh yes that was another clothes. point they were like excuse me do you watch this anime yeah and the character who was at this yeah. point he was like a ten dimensional super being yeah. talking to some other super being yeah. and he was like have you seen this anime no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> this was Yun Tian Ming talking to talking to the other person the other human yeah. okay so it kind of makes sense but still hilarious that they yeah. uh, were like have you seen this anime yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah it's Yun Tian Ming talking to the to Sofon. If it's trying to play that for internet, but like, like okay, even that, like even even if you want to think that that's the point, mm-hmm. okay, then you're making a very bad reference because in that specific scenario, it's true that it was repeating every time, like exactly the same. But yes, the whole it, point yes. was that one of the characters knew that things were repeating exactly the same, mm-hmm. and she kept the memories, and eventually she went completely crazy. Because th- things kept repeating. Essentially, she lived like thousands of years mm-hmm. because this thing kept repeating. Mm-hmm. Completely different from what is happening here, where, because where the universe is reset and no one has memories. That like the sad part was exactly and no one, no one would remember anything. But yes. in in the endless eight, she was remembering everything. So it didn't make any sense. It's a very bad comparison. Okay. <laughs> okay. So thanks for listening. Thank you. And. Hopefully there won't be any more sequels. Yeah. There will be a Netflix adaptation of this one. Mm. So much crap. Wandering Earth. And Wandering Earth 2 is apparently pretty good, people mm. say. You might have to watch it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for listening, especially if you've listened to all our series until the fourth book until the end. Unfortunately, this time... It wasn't as uh, as good as we were expecting. <laughs> I was trying really hard not to hate this book. And I didn't. I had lots of fun with it. But I am sad to report that there were 72 facepalm points. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, yeah, that was the thing. On the next episode, we're going to talk about a classic... 1984 by George Orwell. Both Paul and Paolo are joining me. Please rate us on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, any platform. And see you on the next episode.